While Tina was away, her brother Gregory was taking care of their father, who is wheelchair bound. And Gregory claims that in December of 2015, their father had a heart attack. An ambulance was called and CPR was performed, but he went into a coma due to lack of oxygen to his brain. Their father has since passed away, but Tina and her family feel like there was foul play and that Gregory may have been responsible for their father's death. Take a look. My dad was a hard worker. He built a landscaping business from nothing. He was funny. Everybody respected him and loved him. I was in jail for a little bit and my little brother was supposed to be taking care of my dad. And I trusted that everything was going fine. A week before I got out, I called my family member to tell my dad to pick me up. And they told me that he was in a coma. The whole time that he was in a coma, I would hear bits and pieces of like stories about what really happened. Some of the stories were that my brother was stealing money from him and they got in a scuffle. And a family member told me he had uh, marks on his neck. Everybody's story is different and I'm just trying to piece everything together. Here's what I think happened from a doctor saying that he was put into a coma for lack of oxygen and brain swelling. I'm thinking that he was choked. And my brother's story keeps changing, but I wasn't there. I really don't know. I don't, I want to believe that my little brother wouldn't hurt my dad. When I got out, I was mad. I was mad at everybody, and especially Gregory. I was mad because he was supposed to take care of my dad, and he did it. He deprived me of my dad. I love my dad. I, he was my everything. Gregory took that from me. His story keeps changing. I just want to know the truth. If Gregory fails, I, I just don't want to talk to him anymore. I want him to stay away from me and my family. Um, Gregory, tell me about your relationship with your father. My dad was like my best friend. I would never hurt him. He was, we had a great relationship. Like, I did landscaping with him. He started his own landscape business over there in Silver Lakes. And ever since I was five years old, like, I have good memories with him. Like, <clears throat> sorry, I'm really emotional right now. What? Right. I understand. But, yeah, like, I even have memories with him, like, when I was little, I was five years old, and I tried to grab the blower, the leaf blower, and he would laugh at me because I couldn't even pick it up. And, like, I just, he was everything to me. I would, I would never hurt him. So you were very, very close with your father. Yes, I was. Right. And um, he ended up wheelchair bound, right? Yes. And, and I'm just, it, it, is it okay for you to tell us how he ended up being wheelchair bound? Yes, little by little. First, when he was 21, he got shot, and it went through here and went down to the spinal cord, and the bullet got so stuck. So it eventually deteriorated to the point where he was wheelchair bound. Yeah. Okay. And you were taking care of him once this happened, right? Yes, I was. And how was, I mean, you were a young guy when you were doing that. I was a lot 16. Of you had a lot of responsibility to take care of somebody in that situation, right? Yeah, I even, I stopped going to regular school. I, start, I went to home school to, to start taking care of him, like... And uh, what happened the day he ended up going into a coma? Um, we were in the dining room and he was eating popcorn and then he dropped popcorn and then he was trying to pick it up and he fell on his butt and I told him, I went to go grab the broom and I was like, Dad, hold on, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna pick it up, don't worry about it, but my dad was always stubborn, he always liked doing everything like on his own, you know, he never liked to depend on nobody, but he, he f went to try to get it, and then I went to go call a friend to pick him up because he was a little heavy. And then when me and my friend were picking him up, my f uh, he was laughing. He was like, oh, like y y I'm a little heavy, huh? And I was like, no, don't worry about it, Dad. I could do it. Me and my friend could do it. And we lifted him. And then he tried to, like, throw up, but he couldn't, like, throw up. And then he told me to go get a pot. And then I went to go get a pot because he didn't want to throw up all over himself, you know? And, and then he just passed out like he wasn't talking to me and I was like dad stop playing para jugando pa and he never woke up from that moment on and I called and I didn't know what to do my friend told me to call 911 and I called 911 and they told me to do CPR and I did mouth to mouth CPR and my friend was doing the compressions and like <sighs> and just... then how long was he in a coma for? 
He was in a coma for a year and nine months. And then one day, his whole body just gave up on him. When your brother talks about how he was so close with your father, and you were too, but he talks about how he worshipped his father, that, you know, they worked together, that they did everything together. And then when your you father's... remember when I was little, every weekend I would go work with him? Yeah, when you were little. Then you got older. And you were mean to him. How was he mean to your father? If he didn't get what he wanted, he would throw a fit. But he was there day in, day out. I used to change his diapers. Like, if you really wanted to be there too, Tina, you would have never went to jail. Dad told you. Dad was like, Mija, don't go to jail no more. I'm not going to be here for that long. You're you remember right. that. You're right. And I'm it's... just curious, and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. What were you going to jail for? I just went to jail for warrants. Oh, okay. So stuff that you didn't show up for court. And... Yeah. Yeah. How is your relationship right now? We're distant. You're distant. Mm -hmm. Well, if he passes today, will it make things better between the two of you? Yeah. And then you have a husband, Jonathan? Yes. He's here? Mm -hmm. Let's bring him out. Clean, <laughs> Gregory, you got a guilty conscience and stuff. You, your story keeps changing. I, I hit up three different people, and their story is like the same. And your story is just changing. You're at the house now. And then the last time you came from the liquor store and found him like that. So, like, I don't know. You got a guilty. And every time you drink, you, you come at me, you start crying and start venting to me about you miss your dad and this and that. And be, like, you got a guilty conscience and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and back is like it's eating you up, and, and you need to get something off your chest, like you're guilty or something. So like I don't, I don't know. You know what? And you, you, you're coming at an angle where I, I have to ask you this: Did you leave your father alone, and he had an episode, maybe came back, and you feel guilty that you weren't there, that your father was having some kind of cardiac arrest or uh, some kind of health condition that you weren't there? Maybe you left, and you wish you were there. Is that what happened? I went to the store. You went to the store. And you feel guilty about that. Right? When my dad was just, he was, he was trying to pick up the popcorn and I tried to, I was going to help him. He was still, he didn't have a heart attack. When I got there, he was just sitting on the floor. That's why I feel bad, because I wasn't there to help him pick up the popcorn. But he was still like, he was conscious, you know what I mean? He had a heart attack when me and my friend lifted him. I have a witness. My friend was a witness. He was there with me. I got to imagine your dad's death was a big blow for your family. For five months, when my dad was in the hospital, he didn't go visit him. No matter what I was doing, at least once a week, right. I would go see him. But he didn't see him for five months. But do you understand, and, and he, I'm sure he made a lot of mistakes, but at 16, does anybody really know how to handle that? No. I have so no. much pressure on me, like I, I didn't know what to do. You think I want to go see dad laying on a bed and I can't talk to him, say, dad, I love you. I never could hear nothing from his mouth again. You think she wants to? I didn't want to, I didn't get to say goodbye to him. I didn't get to see him. Then you should have never went to jail. Yeah. Then how can you take over the business? All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> that doesn't help the situation, okay? You can't throw your sister's mistakes in her face either. Oh, I know. Gregory came here today, took a lie detector test. On that day, did you strangle your father? He answered no. On that day, did you do anything to your father to cause him to go into a coma? He answered no. The results came back the same for both questions, and they came back that Gregory told the truth. You know, now that your dad is gone, this is more important than ever, right? We're all we have. We're all you have. I hope you're sorry. Thank you, Mark.